I think the arc of history bends towards democracy, broadly speaking, that eventually autocracies can't last forever because at some point people say, hey, enough is enough, and they want to express their their rights and freedoms and, and take control over their own lives. Where I think the arc of history doesn't necessarily bend is towards Western conceptions of liberalism. And liberalism is not the same as democracy. And, and oftentimes we conflate these two concepts and democracy is basically a shorthand for liberal democracy. But I sort of alluded to this um, earlier that you can have democratic elections and you can have parties that respect the democratic process but are not believers in liberalism. So they might not be totally on board with gender equality or the privatization of religion. They might want clerics to play a role in the passing of legislation. So this is what happens when Islamist parties win in elections. We as Americans were put in an uncomfortable situation because we are small L liberals, but also small D Democrats. And what happens when these two ideas are in tension? So you can have parties that promote illiberal policies and outcomes through the democratic process. And I think Americans, maybe for the first time in a while, are getting a firsthand experience of this with Donald Trump. Donald Trump, I would argue, is an illiberal Democrat in the sense that he's antagonistic towards the classical liberal tradition. He seems to have an ambivalent relationship with the Bill of Rights and minority protections. Anti-Muslim bigotry is a big problem. He refused to disavow FDR's internment of Japanese Americans. This suggests that Trump is, um, he might be democratically elected and then I as an American will have to respect that outcome, but he could undermine the liberal protections as enshrined in our Bill of Rights and, cons and Constitution. So that's an example of how it might apply in the West. Mm -hmm.